Hello, and welcome to the 523 Podcast. Thank you for joining us for our fourth episode. And this, for those who don't know, the 523 Podcast is a podcast for Corbello's Menswear, which is my company that I own. And I'm doing this to talk about menswear, men's style, lifestyle, and even women's wear and things that we can do to change certain things in our city, in our lives, and some entrepreneurship. Yeah. And I'm here with my co-host, Andrea Andrews. Hi. And we missed you last week. Yeah. I think I had school or something come up, but I couldn't make it. She, I think, slept in is really what happened. No. No, she was doing, I think, the internship. Oh, yeah. I was at the hospital. Mm Mm-hmm. So, how are you this morning? Are you feeling good? Um, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm a little bit tired, but I got really, like, a lot of sleep. That's good. And- <laughs> like, I feel like I can't. I'm trying to, like, figure out what my body needs, if it needs more sleep or less sleep, and mm-hmm. I just can't figure it out. I don't know. I got. I went to bed at 1030, and I normally go to bed at, like, 1. I went to bed at 1030. And I set my alarm for 6.30 and could not wake up for the life of me. And I woke up at 8. And I'm, like, confused as to why I couldn't wake up. I got, like, a lot of sleep. So, it's a Monday. <laughs> it is a Monday. <laughs> um, you'll be listening to this on a Wednesday, maybe, whenever it comes out. <laughs> and you'll remember how you felt on Monday. <laughs> and Mondays, it's really, Mondays are not that bad for me. It's Tuesdays. I actually really... really really like Mondays. Yeah. I like, like, my favorite. I was thinking the other day, I was like, if anyone, if someone asked you, like, what your favorite day of the week is, what would you say, Andrea? And I was like, I would totally say Sunday. Like, Sunday is for sure my favorite day, but if I couldn't say Sunday, I would say Monday. I think Saturday, I'm going to go generic. No. Very much like Friday and Saturdays. And I work all weekend. That's not fun. Well, that's true. But, so... Because I like Saturdays, because whenever you wake up and you're like, oh, I've got to go to work, or I have to do this or that, and then you wake up like, oh, no, it's Saturday, and I don't have to do that. Hmm. But since you work on Saturday, that's well, not Well, Saturdays for me, it's like, okay, I have a few hours to do something before I go to work, so I have to cram everything in those few hours, and then mm-hmm. I just end up getting anxiety. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, what to do first? <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, stress. Yes. Stress and soothe. So I asked on Instagram, which if you follow us or don't follow us, um, my Instagram for our Corbellus Menswear is just straight Corbellus Menswear. Same thing for Facebook. But anyway, I asked y'all what you wanted to talk about for the podcast, some topics. Okay. And very little fashion <laughs> topics. <laughs> well, that's fun. Um, but that's cool. Yeah. So one... The first one, of course, was for my sister, which I don't even... I've talked about her a few times on this, and I'm sure she's never even listened to it (laughs) because she has not told me anything about it. But she said she wanted that one of the topics is how great your sister is. And really, my sister is great. And speaking of sisters, we'll talk about mine, then we'll talk about yours. Yeah. Because yours just came in from California. But my sister's great. She's Carly is great. She's, she's really supportive, and she's a middle child. So she was always like, they say the middle children are like always forgotten, forgotten, and no one pays attention to them. But I think she was the only girl between two boys, and she had our parents wrapped around her finger, and she just manipulated. She knew how to manipulate everybody to bend her. Will. That doesn't sound good, Devin. You have to word it a different way. Oh, no, no, like, no. She, she was very, like, an eye and, like, Oh, very... my God. Don't say that. No, she was. She was very intelligent and knew no. how to use her strengths no. to gain profit. No, benefit. because it was usually against me, and that's <laughs> why. But like she's evil. She, she could be. She could be one of those, like, evil geniuses. And But she would make you 
want to follow her. She's very like charismatic like that. Okay. But, like so <laughs> I mean like Hitler and Stalin. But, <laughs> no, I'm I'm kidding. Uh, Carly, we love you. Like we're not here to bash you on this podcast. Oh, for sure. I'm just getting her back. You're like I, letting everything out that you felt. Because I finally have a mic to tell people. <laughs> and so Like we, people aren't going to even know her. They're just going to be like, I hate Devin's sister. No, I, I do love her and she's great. And she's always supportive and she's always there to have her back. Like she could like beat us up and mess with us, but we, she, no one else could mess with us. Like she could always beat anyone up she could think of. She's very athletic, very great. And she just... I got it started like one of her dream jobs uh, in August, I think. No, August, October. And she's an operator for in, for a power plant, and she's loving it. So I'm really proud of her. So anyway, here's your plug, Carly, <laughs> since you responded to my story. Since she asked for it. Right. And so your sister just came back from California to visit for her birthday, right? Yeah, her birthday is um, tomorrow. Today's the 11th, yeah, tomorrow. Um, she lives in California. So my whole family lives in California, um, except for my parents. My parents moved us to Oakdale when we were when I was like eight. Um, and Cassie was six, I think. Um, I might be getting that wrong. I feel like I might have been younger. But I was around eight and um yeah, moved us to California. And at the time, like my grandma lived in Shreveport and I had my aunt and uncle live here too. And then when we moved here, some of them moved back to California. So literally everyone lives in California. And about four years ago, about four years ago, she moved back to San Diego. So I haven't seen her. Um, I haven't seen her in like three years because we would just work a lot and you know, in school and stuff. School, yeah. yeah, school. So she lives with my aunt and uncle and um, all my cousins, and she just decided to come down here and surprise me. And I was at church, and she came down with my parents. And so, like, I knew my parents were coming, and um, I knew my parents were coming. So I was like, "Hey, like, what should I do?" Like, sometimes they, you know, come and visit me or whatever. And then I like turned around and she like sat down by me, and I was like. <laughs> What? <laughs> like, what in the world? Oh, um, that's a nice surprise. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to go eat for her birthday tomorrow. I'm yeah. I'm pretty excited because yeah. I love just going out to eat too much. Yeah. But so we'll go, we'll go to the next question. And this is from Marissa Crochet. And she says, what are your top five fears? Okay. So you want to go first and I'll respond. Hmm. My top five fears. Okay, I'll pick like three just not basic ones, but like ones that I think about often, and then I'll pick two that are like kind of deep. Okay. okay. I did not have any time to think about this or prepare, so thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm absolutely terrified of sharks. I mean, everyone kind of knows mm-hmm. that about me. I have nightmares about them sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah, sharks. I cannot stand being chased. Like, if someone comes after me or lunges toward me anywhere near my neck, like, just the feeling of someone coming after me. Like, my sister used to run after me in the house because she knew that I hated it so much. Like, it's just, Mm -hmm. it's like my whole body, like, locks up, and I'm just like, oh, God, I'm about to die. So, yeah, that's number two. Um, Sharks has to go first because, you know, (laughs) Sure. They're like, they're like the number one predator. So sharks they're being not, chased but after. It's okay. Well, whatever. <laughs> um, we're the number one predator. Let me think. Let me think. I don't, um, you don't like your neck touched. Yeah, but that kind of goes along with the same feeling of someone lunging toward me. That's why I don't oh. like my neck touched. Like it's like, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know. Maybe I should get counseling about it. I don't know. Something. <laughs> <laughs> Something. Um. Speaking of, just a little pause, um, my friends came to visit me, and they have a little girl, and she's um, my godchild, and she came and touched my neck. Like, they pick, picked up her hand to touch my neck from behind. I didn't know they were there, and I almost hit her in the face. <laughs> I was like, I'm so sorry, but y'all know that I hate that. Why would you do that? Anyways, so 
I don't know, just don't touch people when they, <laughs> when they aren't expecting it, I guess. Um, I can't think of any more, but I'll just say the other ones that I was thinking of. Like, I, I sometimes, like, lay awake at night, and I'm like, things that I really, really want in my life, and if they didn't happen, like, I would be very um, disappointed, which, so I guess that's, like, it's a fear of it not happening, because I want it to happen so bad. It's, like, I want to make an impression on, in people's lives. Like, I want to change their lives for the better, even if it's not, like, some big grand thing. But if I die tomorrow, I don't want someone to be like, oh, yeah, she was cool. Like, I want someone to be like, I was having, like, a rough time and she made the difference. Mm-hmm. Or, like, I was having depression or whatever and she saw me. Like, I want to help people and I want to make their lives better and – I guess that's a fear of mine to not be seen and mm-hmm. to not, not even like in a vain way, just like to not be seen as like a light for people. Mm-hmm. So that's three. Five is kind of a lot. <laughs> what if I'm not scared of that many things? I'm yeah. scared of not paying off my student loans. <laughs> Let's go there. Oh, Got a, a Dave Ramsey plan in the making. That's right. You have to pay them off. Um, okay. So that's four. Sure. Four. Okay, I'll go with top four. It's being stabbed. Let's go for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I guess we'll continue with, like, the animal theme. Mm-hmm. I, like, have a fear, a deathly fear of spiders Okay. ever since. Now, they, I think this is one of the fears that's not inherited. I don't know, because, like, my mom's, like, afraid of spiders, too, and I may have gotten it from her, but they're also, like, poisonous. Mm-hmm. And... I'm like Ross from Friends, another Friends reference. Um, he's afraid of spiders too. <laughs> and so I feel it's okay to be afraid exactly, of spiders. Exactly, because he likes dinosaurs. I like okay. dinosaurs. You're wearing a dinosaur okay. hat right now. I am. This is what you got me for Christmas. Yeah. And my logo is a dinosaur. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 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 so, anyway, spiders. Um, that's, that's one. That's number one. <laughs> That should take up, like, three of them because there's so many. Right? Like, sharks. No. <laughs> sharks, I mean, we kill sharks more than they kill us. Whatever. I am afraid, not afraid of the ocean because I love swimming. Mm-hmm. But. Immensity. The the abyss and looking down at, like, the unknown mm-hmm. is, like, in the ocean, like, mm-hmm. whenever you see pictures and stuff. And there's, like, this big word for that fear of the ocean. It's I called Immensity. Remember. I don't think so. It is. I think I thought it started with an L. Oh. I don't know. I've always heard it called immensity. Maybe not. No. Okay. I don't know. We're well, gonna look it up right here, right now. Um. But so that and is then, sharks a part of that though? No, I'm or not afraid. Are sharks of, a part of that? I'm not afraid of sharks. Because that's the only thing that freaks me out about, um, like the ocean, how big it is. Because like there's sharks and like other things. Really, just sharks. Oh no, I can't even pronounce this word. What is it's. It? I can probably pronounce it. Mm-mm. Just let me try. The lassophobia. Let me see it. If you say it the same, I'm gonna hurt you. Yeah, it's the lassophobia. Exactly. <laughs> Immensity. Sorry, I keep on hitting the mics over here. Chris is gonna have a good time editing this. <laughs> but so, spiders. I would I would say maybe the fear of the ocean. I guess the fear that like the unknown, like mm-hmm. especially like watching Nemo and like whenever they're going down to like the trench and it's like dark and they don't know what's there. It's like oh my gosh. Hmm. And I think that yeah. kind of goes with like the fear of like the dark too, and, like in caves and stuff. I don't See, know. That bothers me. I don't think. Oh, for sure. I'm for claustrophobic me. though. Maybe so. Like once you get down there and it's so dark, you would feel claustrophobic. Yeah, I think just not knowing what's mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Oh, heights, too. So that's three. Mm. I cannot do heights. I can't do ladders. I can't um, I can't do... I've just started being able to do roller coasters in the last, like, five years. Wow. Yeah. And so, like, Space Mountain is, like, great for me. Because <laughs> it's, like, roller coaster and then, like, pitch black, not knowing mm-hmm. what's going on. <laughs> but actually, that was my first roller coaster to do. Did we do that one? When we, we did. To, was it Universal we, or Disney? 
It was Disney. We ran across. Mem- it was just like one ride, right? Two. Was it we the went. one? Was it the one where we were like back? Like I was behind you in your front, and I was recording you, and it was like neon lights everywhere and really dark. I have pictures. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. <laughs> yep. But anyway, so those are three, four. Mm, I think. I don't know. I have to think about this one too. I, th- I guess we'll go to something deep is maybe just n- like in a, like a disaster, which I think about this a lot. Like I love disaster movies mm-hmm. and all that. I, th- I think being <laughs> separated <laughs> from like your friends and family, like during like a disaster, mm-hmm. I think would like that's like a big fear. Yeah. But I think it could like really like survive that and just like like form like this like group and like find my family through whatever may happen Mm -hmm. yeah that I guess that that Mm -hmm. would be a fear too Mm -hmm. or like having to just live primitively and survive on your own if like you don't have any kind of I think I could do that I could not do that yeah no I could not (laughs) you'd have to like grow your own stuff and I know, and your plants die all the time. No, I don't. Okay. How and many have you kept alive? All of mine. Except for two, the ones that are in the living room. Okay, that avocado plant was hard to grow, okay? okay? And that's okay. not my fault. Okay, okay, okay. And then that piece lily was just hard. Okay, okay. Okay, the only reason why it died is because you overwatered it at first and it's not right. bounced back. It's okay. finally bouncing back. Okay, because I made it bounce back. Because you killed it at first. Anyways. That means I have all the power. No. So, uh, five, those are the fears. Um, the next question is, we're talking about, like, Valentine's Day. Like, what What yeah. do you it's wear? It's love week. It is. So, Valentine's Day is Thursday of this week. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some people love it. Some people don't. Some people just completely avoid it. Some people... I don't know. I've never had anything against it. I mean, they have, like, the good Reese's. and I'm not a big, um, like, I don't decorate for Valentine's Day, you know? Like, I have friends that decorate for Valentine's Day. Why would you do that? A lot of people do it. A lot of people with who love to decorate their homes hmm. seasonally, they love to do that. And um, it's a big... Um, there's a big market for it in the Ray Dunn collection stuff. I'm all in my eyes right now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I've never been one to decorate for Valentine's Day or Easter. The only ones I really decorate for are like fall and Christmas, and I don't really go all out. Christmas I kind of try to, but um, so that's like one of the marketed like things that I just don't really s- understand. But if it makes you happy, go for it. But – I think I we're talking think about fashion, though, I'm not about decoration. To, okay, I'm about to <laughs> change subjects. Okay. Um, I do think, like, we, you don't need to spend a bunch of money for Valentine's Day. You don't need to go out and get a new outfit. You don't need to go and spend, like, hundreds of dollars on your date. I just, I mean, it's nice, but me as a woman, like, I would appreciate it if that was on a random, like, Wednesday or Tuesday. Like, for someone to be creative enough to – be spur of the moment and kind of, you know, do it Mm -hmm. off the cuff. But, um, I don't know. I'm more of like a, I could, I don't know. Do you like to like go out and like get dressed up and have fun or just like something like chill? Like my friend who's married and pregnant right now, she's like, I just want to have a picnic in my living room. And like, that's romantic to me. And I'm like, okay, go for it. But me, I'm single. So I'm like, I'm taking some of my girls and we're going to go eat and like get dressed up and have fun. And so, like, I could kind of see both sides because a picnic in my living room with, like, the man I love kind of sounds fun, too. (laughs) Even though, you know, it's just... We have to find that man first. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think, I mean, change it up. Like, if you're in a committed relationship, like, each year, like, you do something different. I think not going out on the day is Mm -hmm. also good because, one, it's, like, so crowded. Like, restaurants... Yeah, we had some friends celebrate it last weekend. Did you? Jacqueline and Ryan. Oh, yes. Um, 
So, I don't know. I think as far as, like, fashion goes, I mean, you dress up. Um, what are some good, like, real think, quick ideas to um, that are, like, impressive, but not it doesn't look like you're trying too hard? Mm-hmm. I think it depends on where you go and what this, like, situation is. Mm-hmm. I think khakis, button down, and a tie are always a good go-to. A tie? Mm-hmm. Or um, slacks, button down, and a tie. Like, something simple. You don't need a, a sports coat or... Unless you're going to a nicer restaurant. If you're going to a nicer restaurant, I really like one of those, like, just nice shirts. I don't know if if it's, <laughs> like, it's not like a T-shirt. Do you know what I mean? You have some. It's just like a, I don't know, it's just like a nice dress-up shirt. Solid but it's not like a button-down. No. So, yeah. With I'll, a sports coat, jacket mm-hmm. or whatever, and then just some, like, even jeans with mm-hmm. some nice shoes. Like, that's a really cool look. Or a sweater, like or a sweater, a, yeah. But um, with the weather, it, like, <laughs> well, it depends on where you're at. You're at. It could be eighty tomorrow. You never know. It could yeah. be a hundred tomorrow. We never know. Well, you can check <laughs> the weather. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of do know. <laughs> but anyway, and it's unpredictable. You're right. But you were talking about my boyfriend, John Krasinski. <laughs> what were you saying okay, about he's him? He's married <laughs> to Emily Blunt. <laughs> Um, John, speaking of like the nice, like the like the shirt, long sleeve shirt, or like light, thin sweater and slacks, I really like that look. Mm-hmm. I think it's very classy. And mm-hmm. John Krasinski, he's he does that a lot, and he's a really major fashion inspiration for myself. And so I, I think that's a really cool look to go with. Yeah, it's very classic, but it's not like the same as everyone. It's not like yeah. a a dress shirt and tie and a suit. Mm-hmm. Um, I really don't think you even need like a sports coat over it because sometimes like the the neckline for like the crew neck or like a V-neck sweater or shirt and a, a sports coat sometimes doesn't match up. Like it just sometimes it looks off. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you have, re- have to be really careful whenever you're putting a sports coat and a t-shirt or a sweater on. So what do you mean by the need to line up? Not line up. Like it's sometimes it just looks – off if you look at it like you know like whenever you're wearing you're wearing one mm-hmm. and it, you have to make sure that the it's not like frumpy like the the neckline's not frumpy if that okay there's like that commercial i think like yeah, gain like the, or something the and they're like, like on a date saggy and she's like you look very comfortable <laughs> <laughs> and it's like i don't know all the way down to the yeah you know what i'm talking about yeah but so i think i think just make sure you're comfortable always and Oh, make sure you put some effort into it, especially if you're going on a date or if it's your first Valentine's Day or mm-hmm. or even, like, your eighth, like, and with the same person. You still want to put some effort in any, like, date or special event yeah. you go into with that per- person just because you want to show that you're still wanting to dress up for them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, look good for them. Right. And I think same mm-hmm. thing with, like, women, like, you know, and – they take a little bit more time, obviously, but, like, you're going out, like, you're, like, a couple, like, you're showing off yourself to the world, and, I don't know, I think it's, it's great, it's good to, like, put a little bit of thought into your outfits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I don't think going on the actual Valentine's Day or times, <laughs> we'll do that for Chris. Chris. <laughs> Valentine's. Like, it's multiple, is what he said, I think. <laughs> I was just you know like when you take a word and you like make it sound different or like it with like a different accent mm-hmm. like um <laughs> like you know that that video on Facebook where it takes like a bunch of random stuff and the guy's like how uh, he mispronounces it <laughs> yeah like tied titty titty <laughs> paws <laughs> I mean you know like <laughs> I probably should have said that, but it's the funniest <laughs> it's the funniest video ever. So I'm just thinking of like Valentine's, like This is a family podcast, Bay, Andrew. Bay please keep line, it the PG. <laughs> Bayline teen. Like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> My brain's dumb anyway. <laughs> oh gosh. We're gonna have to go into the P thirteen category on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, okay, how do you think about, or how do you feel about red and pink together? I think only for, well. 
So my no. sister absolutely hates red and pink together, and I I did too, you know, by extension. So one year for her birthday, I threw her a surprise party, and I decorated everything in red and pink. <laughs> And she almost had a heart attack. <laughs> she was like, this is absolutely terrible. But thank you. No, I, I like it. I mean, it is like it a very like cringe. Valentine's Day themed color or color combination. Yeah. But I have like, a, or I used to have this shirt and it was like reddish polka dots on like a pink shirt. And it looked good. I think. And like. It depends on how you do it. It depends. And I don't think it should be overdone, but, like, if it's for Valentine's Day. If it's, like, harsh pink, like, you know, like, hot pink and, like, stop sign red, then it's, like, what are you doing? These guys are not going to know what that means. (laughs) Hot pink? I mean, Everyone knows what hot pink is. Yeah, but, like. Think of the Barbie car when you were a kid. (laughs) Okay, again. (laughs) All you men out there, think of that Barbie car. And then everyone knows what a stop sign is. This is why we have another, we have a girl on the podcast (laughs) to have. The perspective I'm like, from the Fuchsia female side. and burgundy. And people like me are like, it's pink. I like pink and a darker pink, and okay, that's like so the three pinks. Do you pinks. think burgundy is more of um, a purple or more of a red? Do you think it's barbecue sauce or do you think it's? Well, I wish I guess, you could just see the faces I make to I her guess sometimes. Barbecue sauce is more like a brown base. But do you think it's more? Because I was I was at my friend's house the other day, and we were looking through a closet, and I was like, "Yeah, this sweater it's like a um it's like a dark purple," and she was like, "That's burgundy," and I was like, "Oh dang!" I mean, it looks dark purple to me. And then I have some friends where it's like red, and I'm like, "This is burgundy," and they're like, "That's red," and I'm like, "Oh, you know, just I don't know. What's your opinion?" <laughs> I mean, burgundy. That's that color that's, like, a darker red. So, right? okay, so, cool. Like, I'm, a, like, asking. Like, that's, oh. like, my my suit that I wore that one time with, like, the mm-hmm. embroidery and stuff, that's, like, a burgundy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, like, a, I don't, there's, like, a darker purple, but, like, I don't know. It's, like, a red. I don't know. Are we going to talk about all the colors on the color wheel now? <laughs> <laughs> I love, Please love list. talking about <laughs> No. I got so excited just now. I love talking about colors. Anyways, we'll change the subject though. Yes. Because art class was my favorite. One time I drew a bird from my art teacher. She framed it and put it on the wall. <laughs> I did. I was um, her favorite. Miss Odessa House. What's her? Is that her first name? Odessa? Odessa. Hmm. Interesting. Yep. Destined for greatness. Okay, stop. <laughs> Do you have any more questions? I actually, they're more of the same, talking about, um, like, Valentine's. So one of them, they did ask, like, what, it's, like, your favorite, like, Valentine's date. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what is your, like, your favorite? Like, what's something that you think about? Okay, I do this sometimes. Like, I'll be thinking, driving in my car, and I'll be like, what if a guy just, like, surprised me and did you know, blank, blank, blank. You ever think about that? Like, what kind of surprise would I just, like, love? Not or what's really. the surprise that you daydream about? <laughs> what? Just, you don't do that? I just think, like, yeah, the male and female mind is... <laughs> like, who does that? That's so weird, okay? <laughs> this is a great example for the difference between what we all think about. I usually think about, like, disasters. Like, what would happen now if, like, an earthquake happened here? Like, what would oh, go down? I, I and think about so, that, too. But no. sometimes I think about good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Devin. Sure. But I, I, I saw this, like, date idea. I, I thought it was really cool. And you, like, start out, like, I guess it's your house. And, like, you flip a coin. And, like, heads you go right and tails you go left. And every time you come to a stop, stop sign, red light, whatever, you flip it again. And then, like, after, like, you set, like, a number of flips. Like, so you'll do ten flips. So each stop, and then, like, after the 10 flip, like, the closest thing to do there or, like, stop and, like, either have a picnic or go to eat. Like, okay. uh, you know, that's where, it, like, it's like, just very <clears throat> random. And I thought that would be a really neat idea to mm-hmm. do. Also, if, like, we lived in a bigger city with, like, a bigger airport, um, you just go, like, to the airport and, like, buy the cheapest ticket. I would totally do that. I think that's, that's fun. 
Yeah, and like you just go on that like a, a little day trip or like a night, like you stay overnight, and that'd be really neat. But like our April only goes to Houston and mm-hmm. Dallas, so I mean, which would be really neat to just do that. But yeah, like, I think the tickets are like three hundred dollars <laughs> to even go there for like a thirty minute trip. Yeah, but anyway, so I think I think those date ideas would be really really neat. I think yeah, simple simple dates that don't cost a lot because I feel like if you spend a bunch of money and like the girl knows that you're spending a bunch of money it makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable I'm not gonna lie to you and I know that not everyone is like that a lot of girls are very like you better spend money on me but it makes me uncomfortable just because I'm not a high maintenance person so Mm -hmm. like I don't want you to break your back but some guys like I dated a guy where like that was kind of his love language like spending money on someone Mm -hmm. and showing that hey I'm like, I'm, I want to, you know, lavish you or whatever, if that's the right word. But for me, it's kind of like, that's nice, and I appreciate that. But, like, there are, like, cost-efficient ways to woo someone, mm-hmm. you know? I think with guys, too, it's, like, you're you're trying to impress the girl and, yeah. like, show them that you can take care of them financially. And so yeah. that's a way to do that. Yeah, and it is nice to have that feeling mm-hmm. to where it's, like, I don't have to worry about it. Like, my man's got me, you know? Right. And I think... It doesn't matter what the amount you spend on exactly. the date. I yeah. think it's more of if it's if it's thought out and if it's mm-hmm. special. I think if you make that time that you're spending together special, like it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like whether it be a picnic or like you're going to like visit a museum or or, or an art mm-hmm. opening um, or exi- exhibit opening, and then like going to like do something like I think downtown like I don't know I think it's really neat just listening to the person and like figuring Mm -hmm. out what they like you know like if someone not just I mean everyone to each their own I guess but like if someone took me to an art opening or like an art museum I think I would be really bored I know that's terrible to say I would be really (laughs) bored but if someone was like hey it's it's what it's rude I mean I'm sorry if I offend you terribly sorry but I think I would be bored but if someone was like hey let's go on a hike I'd be like marry me (laughs) you know so everyone's different but if like if you like try and get to know that person and just do what interests them I think that's they're gonna love it you know yeah I would love to go to an art exhibit opening yeah and that's and I'm going by myself a lot of the times because I I think they're neat and I, I love art even though I can't, like, draw or take pictures or, or do anything like that. Mm-hmm. But, like, fashion and, like, well, I guess visually creative art. is, like, my art. But Yeah. Different I mean, art wouldn't bore me. Like, if I went to a museum of, like, well, museum nature is like, photography or art opening of, like, nature photography, I would die. I would be so happy. But if I was just watching, like, abstract or, like, modern art, I would be, like, Uncultured is what that I am means. very, I'm uncultured <laughs> swine. <laughs> oh my God. I wasn't saying that. <laughs> What's that off of? It's just like a saying that it's, everyone says. I think it's off of a show, but I don't really know <laughs> exactly where it came from, but a lot of people do say it now. But it's basically like you. Get it together. Yeah. Or just like you just don't know anything about like culture, pop culture. I don't really care about pop culture. Okay, well, that's not, I mean, just saying, like, <laughs> obviously you don't care about any culture. because <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. You're just like, I don't know, you're just like, I don't want to go to no art exhibit opening. I mean, I'm not saying I would, like. I'm going to go get Yeehaw and then go to the woods somewhere. I would appreciate it. I'm just saying that's not, like, what Your makes ideal date. me and so, super happy. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I would just, do it. And just to say I did it, like, yeah, I got to experience that. But, like, I wouldn't feel like that person knew me very well. You know? Is that why you never come with me whenever I ask you to go? It's just because I knew growing up, like, when we had field trips to the museum, I was always bored. I love And I was always so happy when they took me to the farm. <laughs> I was like, oh my, let's go play with the goats. Like, that's what made me happy. And you're like the opposite of, like, a country girl, too. Which yeah, is I'm not very country. But I do love animals, and I do love, like, my interests are just. I've always okay. loved museums. Like, literally. It depends on what kind. Like, every birthday, like, growing up, my mom would take me to either, like, Houston to go to, like, the museum and the zoo there, Mm -hmm. or to New Orleans to do, like, museums and zoos there. Mm -hmm. 
And so I've always just loved one because, like, they had dinosaurs, like the dinosaur bones. That was always really neat. And uh, obviously I'm, a, I'm obsessed with dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. If, if you listen to, like, 30 seconds of any podcast that I talk about, because <laughs> I've talked about dinosaurs, I think, in almost all of them. <laughs> and so I, I, I just love – and then now I'm as I'm older and, like, it's a lot of history and, like, there's different things – here and in different museums like like right now there's this really cool exhibit at the historic downtown Mm -hmm. um but oh i forgot her last name her first name's emma jean and she's a photographer this is here mm -hmm. well that's a great idea to take someone on a date well yeah that's why i said that yeah (laughs) but so there anyway so her exhibit is um, of her photography, which is really neat. Mm-hmm. And she does different things. Like there was one, I think it's Marlon Brando is one of the um, pictures hmm. that she took, which is a, obviously a famous actor from... Yeah. Um, the Godfather. Yeah. And it was like whenever he was young. And I think it's, I don't think it's Marlon Brando. I think it's someone else. Anyway, like I love like looking at different things. Like before that, they had like the art of animation and they they did like the Pink Panther and Looney Tunes exhibit, like how the animation was created and things like that. And there, there there's this pottery exhibit from like Japanese um, pottery inspiration that was really, that's a really neat one to look at too, because it has like that nature influence. And so like, I think at, in museums and most of the time they're like, they're big and they have different exhibits. So it's like a, it's a great way, but obviously like this is like something like, like these are traveling exhibits and they also have like one that's like permanent at the historic downtown mm-hmm. city hall 1911 is like the 1910 fire no 1911 fire no it's 1910 i think it's the year of the fire and it's you know the history of lake charles and like what happened there and that was like a major shift in like the history of lake charles mm-hmm. was that fire in 1910 and it like burnt down half of downtown and Hmm. It was, it's really neat. So it's, I think you learn a lot at things like that. And it, you kind of open up yourself to different experiences. And, like, I love nature, too. And I think going on a hike is a great way to spend time with someone. Mm-hmm. And I love nature, and I love going in nature. And I think it's good for the soul, too, yeah. along with art. So I agree. And I'm down for whatever. Like, I'm, I'm not, like, down in museums. I, I would she definitely is, go, and so. I would make the experience fun. <laughs> But I think for me, like, if the museum has to do with disasters, like 9-11. I would be in heaven. <laughs> 9-11 or um, the Holocaust, stuff like that, where I'm just like, this is so tragic. No. So my one of my favorite cities to visit is D.C., Washington, D.C. I've never been. Love it. Love the city. I've been a few times, and there is a lot of museums and culture and, okay, stop looking at the guy outside. <laughs> I have class with him. Oh, do you want to ask him if he has a date for Valentine's? Because I can get you one. I already have dates. Leave me alone. (laughs) Okay. But anyway, so they do have the Holocaust Museum, which is very heart-wrenching and touching. Mm -hmm. But they also, I don't know, each of the Smithsonian's are, like, very different, and they're very neat. And obviously, I love history, and so, like, Mm -hmm. that's, like, one of our, our most historic cities is dc and there's so much history behind each block and they, they have the new zone which i tell everybody that goes to dc that they need to go to the new zone like mm-hmm. it's a new it's a museum about like news and how it's changed over the years mm-hmm. like with newspapers and then television and the internet and things like that it's so great and then it's it's basically a, a, a museum about like disasters because it's like history changing moments Mm -hmm. and history making moments and a lot of the times disasters do that but yeah anyway love museums (laughs) (laughs) the subject matter is what like i'm kind of like okay i need to tell me more about it and then i'll tell you if i'd be interested you know this is why i would still go people ask why we're not together and there's a few reasons but this is one of the main ones we disagree about because about um, culture. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and we're like brother and sister, and we like don't get along. 
But you know what, Devin? There are a few reasons why I wouldn't be with you, too, okay? Whatever. Um, I'm dumping you. You're not dumping me. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. We'll go with that. But anyway, so as a review for Valentine's dates, if you need date ideas, do something different. Um, Do something that's special between the both of you, whatever that may be, or if it's your first time, like, I don't know, just don't overdo it because you'll have to do it, the old saying, you have to do it bigger next year. Like, yeah. I don't know, look up, like, really unique date ideas on the internet. And yeah, and I think for girls, if, I mean, if, I guess girls listen to this too. So, like, if you are nervous about going on a date or, you know, it's the first time you're going to be with your boyfriend on a date or whatever, like, just be confident. Be confident and have fun. Same for a guy. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna have fun if you're like stiff and in an uncomfortable outfit. Like just yeah, be exactly. confident and wear what makes you feel good. Mm-hmm. But you know, it looks like you're you know you care about your appearance. I'm not saying like don't wear right. sweats because it makes you feel good. You know, just like put a little effort in, but still be comfortable and just my lord, just be yourself. <laughs> like just be yourself. Amen. Sister. Come on. <laughs> Don't be, like, all nervous and stiff because you never – you may never get a date like that back. Like, that's something that I've learned. Like, you may think, oh, like, it's just a date. Like, no, you may never have that experience with that person ever again. So just make the most of it. Laugh all night. Like, just open your mind up and talk about whatever you want to talk about. Like, just have the time of your life. So (laughs) that's my little (laughs) – Dating tips from Andrea. Yeah. Yeah. Again, thank you all for listening. And if you have any suggestions on future topics, yeah. please let us know. Um, Facebook, Instagram, we love, private love, messages. Love that. Yeah. And it gives us some t- something to talk about. And other than ourselves and our daily yeah. lives, because I'm sure people are tired of hearing that. But <laughs> they may not be because I've had Whatever, a few Whatever, we're interesting. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but anyway, and until next time. Have a good one and do Happy good. Happy Valentine's. <laughs>